interesting things you can do with brushes. So, there is a great deal of things that you can do with brushes. There is no doubt in my mind that you could spend weeks showing cool things with brushes. I just want to show you this one, and you can show, and you can use it to your advantage to kind of work out whatever I, assignment I give you. Okay, because I'm going to say, you know, in that assignment, probably do some very interesting things with brushes. But you don't, you can't do this one more than once in that assignment. So what I have here is a picture, and I'll show you a good place to get pictures that are open source for students. Um, what I do is I go out uh, quite often and take a lot of shots. And what I do is I upload those shots to houseoftutorials.net slash zfleamarket. Okay, so you can use any of those shots. They are open source. You can ha you have my permission to use any of these. Okay. So, and these are taken at several museums. Um, they allow cameras in, so I just take some pictures of sculptures, and mainly sculptures, because I like how the light bounces off of them. And what this this is, is it usually is a thing where we use this in senior pictures. When we take senior pictures as a photographer, uh, you have this background, and you can take and eliminate the background and uh, make it all grungy, and then eliminate the, the outside edge of this and make it all grungy. And they love it. They just dig it, it's just because it's grungy and cool and whatever. So... What I'm going to do here is kind of make this about the same size as this document. And this document is just 8.5 by 11. It's nothing special. It's 8.5 by 11 by 300 dots per inch. Based upon our previous videos, you should know how to produce an 8.5 by 11 by 300 DPI document. Now. So I'm going to show you this little trick. And um, in the background here, all this is is just a bunch of brushes. So I just I went in here and I, I made sure that there is no white. Okay, so I made this kind of a rust look. And all I did was take several different kind of brushes and I put out a bunch of brushes. That's one of the things that you got to do as a student. Then... What I want to do is kind of put focus on the picture. By the way, I stole the colors away from the picture. Okay, and I use the Alt button to do that. So I can Alt, click, Alt, and then switch this over, Alt, click, and then I get two separate colors right here. And I, I can use X on the keyboard to switch between them. X is in Xavier. So to pay more attention to the picture, what happens is if you blur Gaussian blur, the background, the human eye can't stand to look at something blurry, but loves to look at something sharp. So if you want to blur that out just a little bit, you notice I instantly see the sharp edges of the picture. Just because my mind can't formulate what is in the background, it's interesting but I don't know what it is, therefore I'm not going to pay as much attention to it. Okay. Now, I'll show you this. This is the pen tool. And the pen tool is great. You just have to make sure it's on this setting right here so it just makes the path. And w all the time I get the same problem. How do I make a straight line in Photoshop using a brush? So there are several ways to do that. You can like click on a brush and then hold shift and it'll make a straight line going across. That's one way to do it. The pen tool, however, allows me to control that. Say if I wanted to go all the way around this picture. So what I do is I hold shift and I click on every corner here. And now this is a path. And paths are located under the path palette. Paths. 
So let's say I have something very interesting. Let's say I have that brush that I made, that abstract thing that nobody knows why I made it. Well, let's look at brushes. And I have this. That's pretty interesting. But what if I take it and turn on angle jitter? It becomes a lot more interesting. And I, I don't want it to do much. I just want it to angle jitter. I don't want it to have any control over it. Okay. So, another thing we could look at is the spacing between it. Maybe something more like that. And what happens is, this outside edge is a path, and what I can do is I can be on a layer and click this button. And it'll make this very interesting thing going around the picture, kind of like a frame. And depending upon the opacity I have it set at, it does that. Now that's one way to do it. That's a very grungy, cool thing to do. But um, here's another way to do it. If I click on this button, when I'm on the picture, this is the layer mask. Okay, and this is advanced, so just keep in mind I'm going to be covering more about this later. Uh, whenever you paint black in here, things go away. I can now see the background when I cut into it. So it's kind of like having an eraser in the fact that everything black becomes transparent when I paint in this. So I have to click on this to be able to paint into it. So if I click this button right here, notice my black and white got here. I don't have my color anymore. You can't put color on a layer mask. So I'm going to turn my opacity all the way up. I'm going to have black on my top and I'm going to click this button. And what it did, it cut back into the picture. And now when I move around the picture, you notice it's floating, but it's transparent. So it's taking and kind of blending the blurry stuff into the picture, making a very cool kind of effect of depth. Because now I have these very blurry edges and they are leading into the picture. To further out the effect, if I wanted to, because these have very sharp edges in this point, um, I'm almost paying attention to this point right here and not the picture. So I got blurry to sharp to sharp again. So if I wanted to, I can also blur this out a little bit. So make sure you click on this and filter blur, Gaussian blur. And I don't want to blur it out all the way. I just want to blur it out to the point where it's not very interesting to look at. So there we go. That is how you make a very cool effect with photos. So please move on to the next video where I cover some more things you can do with brushes.